you know who I am, you know where to find me, let's get into it. Now today is going to be a little different video because there's not so much about all the information that's on social media, although you will see it a couple times. But it's more about opinions and people's opinions and how does this affect us as consumers, not only of content, but also of brands. And it was inspired because I've been watching Peter Mann for the last few weeks go through all range of emotions to get to a conclusion that it that all started with him tackling some subjects that he's usually not that... What's the word I'm looking for? He's not keen into talking about. There are more serious topics that he had said in the past he didn't want to tackle. But right now he wants to tackle them because he notices how people support others who don't deserve it. And yes, I'm talking about James Charles and Colleen Ballinger as an example, but all bad actors, okay? And who follows them and who supports them. And this is a conversation that takes a lot of dimensions. When you see where Peter was going and where other people have been going in terms of pee protectors and whatnot, and I decided I wanted to give some perspectives on some of the things that I noticed because, for example, one of the videos that Peter did was in reference to where does it stop. And I don't know that he got to a conclusion that either he or anybody else is happy with. And I'm going to tell you why. Name. Name me. One company that doesn't have a bad actor working in it. I'll wait. decided to take a very small group of headlines, if you will, because I think you get my point. If we go company by company, industry by industry, we're going to find bad actors in every single industry, in every single company, in every single service or, or product everywhere. So where do we draw the line? And by the way, don't get me wrong. I admire people like Peter Mann who decided that he didn't want to support anybody that supported people that have actually gone on camera and admitted their wrongdoing and have paid zero time and zero consequences for their misdoings. And I realize I invented that word probably. I don't know if that word exists. But the bottom line is this. What do we do? Because I remember when I was a teenager, the big brand at the time was Reebok. And everybody had the Reeboks with the little ankle booties and the whole nine yards. I had one in pink. I had several in white with either pink lines or blue lines. I love my Reeboks. And then somewhere between my last year of high school and my first two years of college, we found out that they were being made at sweatshops in countries where they probably got two cents a day for working more than eight hours in inhumane, inhumane conditions. And so my entire group of girls boycotted them and ended up going with other brands that started my very long relationship with Nike that lasted until a couple of years ago when I started getting serious about exercise. And then I went to other brands. But the bottom line is that at the time, we had a big issue and we wanted to boycott any brand that did something wrong. And that sounds like a beautiful idea and concept until you start realizing how the trickle-down effect goes into every other company and everything else. Because where do you draw the line? 
do you draw the line at Reebok only or do you stop shopping at any business that sells Reebok because you want to send a message? See where I'm going with this? It's kind of like Elon Musk. Most people wanted to boycott Elon, but they haven't gotten out of Twitter. Most people said, well, Teslas are bad, but most people can't afford Teslas, so it doesn't matter. The question is, where do you draw the line? Now, I admire people that can stand by their convictions and eliminate everything from their life that is not related to the one bad actor. But as Peter Munn himself proved with his um, lip gloss series, it's harder than it looks. Because where do you decide? Is it because somebody follows somebody else? For example, when it's a brand, how many brand... <sighs> Let me see how I explain this. Okay, you have a brand. I'm not going to name a real brand. I'm going to create a fake brand. Ted's Teddies. I don't know. Ted's Teddies has a social media manager, okay? Back in 2014, 2015, this brand manager wanted to get all the booty gurus in their on their website, so they started following every single booty guru. 2017, that person went on to another job and they got a new social media manager. Usually, social media managers are not in the business of deleting accounts and getting rid of bad things. They just keep adding to the roster because it looks good for their numbers. I mean, let's be real. If you see a company, a corporation in corporate America that has a million subscribers and then their competition only has 200,000, who are you going to think is a better option? Unfortunately, that's the way most people think. They don't think about service or product or anything like that. They just go by the numbers. That is one of the drawbacks of social media. And so you have companies that basically they just keep adding to the roster. They don't really pay attention. So one of the examples that Peter gave, he went brand by brand seeing if they follow James Charles, and most of them did. But the question is, do they really? He said something very interesting. At some point he said, you know, if the brand doesn't interact with the person, does it really matter if they follow him or not? That's one way to look at it. But another thing that you have to keep in mind is that there's a lot of companies all over the United States and all over the world that will follow people based on a trend. For example, if they sell t-shirts, they will follow everybody that works in clothing on social media. But then a particular community kicks off, like true crime, for example. So they will go ahead and add all of those people and try to get some sort of collab with them or something, or a sponsorship. So they add all of those creators. Then six months later, maybe the art community is hot. So they'll follow all those great. You see where I'm going? There is no rhyme and reason for why people follow who they're follow. Now, when it comes to other content creators in the space, like Manny anyway and all these other people, then I understand the logic. Because what every beauty influencer does, the, 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 it's in the title. It influences the behavior of other people. And like Peter o has said more than one occasion, well, if Manny's following him, he must not be that bad. Now, mind you, I would not use Manny as the litmus test of who I should follow or not follow, but that's me. I'm an adult, I'm older, and I saw the whole thing go down, and I know exactly who these people are. At least to me. That's another thing. What we see is not necessarily what we get. What do I mean by that? It's very easy to say, and yes, I've heard Peter say this, I've heard other content creators say this. Behind closed doors, we talk to each other and we call each other to the mat for things that we've done. And he gave the example of Sam from Here for the Tea, who is no longer with us, but he used her as an example of somebody that will call out people and tell them how to fix the problems that they had created. Well, that's all well and good, but do we really know that the influencers and the big creators are not behind the scenes trying to convince these people to actually 
take accountability for their actions. Because I can think of several examples where I have been told that drama channels have been called out and they have decided not to follow whatever the group of other content creators decided to tell them. What makes you think that somebody, you know, if because first of all, we have to go back to the whole thing that, well, you know, Hollywood. No, you don't know Hollywood because you're not there. And I understand that we have this idea of what Hollywood is and Hollywood isn't. And I understand that we don't think they're very human-like and that they're all in it for the greed and the money. But there are some really nice people in Hollywood and everywhere else because every industry has the cutthroat people and the nice people that are just trying to make a living or have something to show. And so this whole idea that, oh, in the drama community, we call each other out when we do something wrong, but nobody else seems to do it. Yeah, I doubt that's true. I'm not saying that the drama community doesn't call each other out. I mean that other industries, uh, the other um, communities don't call each other out. But at the end of the day, here's where I find this whole conversation interesting. Because we are expected to act like adults. So at the end of the day, an adult is going to take or, or not the options that they're offered. So are we supposed to respect them as adults and let them make their own decisions? Or are we supposed to assume that they're always going to do whatever we tell them to do? It is what it is. The reality is that every person is going to have their own little yard or uh, not yard, um, their own little measuring of what constitutes a good content creator, a problematic content creator, a bad content creator, and whether or not the problematic behavior is bad enough for us to decide not to follow them or to follow them or what not. I have every intention of calling out anybody that doesn't stand to my standards, but my standards are not yours. I don't expect you to stop following anybody at all just because I said so. I expect you to understand that I'm giving you the information so that you make an informed decision because I have a lot more respect for people that decide to follow somebody even though they're problematic, knowing full well that they're problematic, than somebody that will just follow or unfollow people just because somebody told them to. It is what it is. That's the mentality. That's my mentality. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't listen to any drama or commentary channel or anything like that. What I'm saying is, make your own decision. Yes, Mad respect for people that decide to stop following James Charles and Colleen Ballinger. But down the line, how many things are you going to give up because there's one bad person that you know of when there might be a hundred that you don't know? One example that keeps coming back to mind is um, Chanel. And Miss Chanel, the originator, the main character in the story... Um, has always been blamed for being a Nazi sympathizer. I am doing research on this person because I am fascinated by somebody that completely reinvented themselves out of nowhere and created an empire. So I might be able to answer that question later on. But the one thing that I have noticed that some people have mentioned happens to be a person that she was associated with. Well... Who are you associated with right now that does not have the same beliefs that you do? Do you know? Do you know if maybe somebody you hang out with, like our family member or friend, is doesn't like gay people or doesn't believe that women should have the same rights as men or is a Trump supporter or in the case of people that are on the right is a Biden supporter and how do you draw the line on where you support and who you don't support and why? See where I'm going with this? That also brings me to a second topic in the case of Chanel, Krispy Kreme, and Volkswagen, which are the three main ones that are always accused of being um, involved with the Nazis. That's those company that was in what the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. That was a hundred years ago, anywhere from 100 to 80 years ago, depending on who you ask. 
are we not supposed to grow and change and evolve? And if so, then where do we draw the line? It fascinates me when people want to talk about how we want people to change and be better, but then we want to blame people for things that happened 180, 50 years ago, even 30, 20. And we still want to slam them for what they did in the past. We're not giving them the chance to grow and change. And I'm not saying this as a supporter of Chanel, Volkswagen, or Krispy Kreme because, A, I can't eat gluten, so there goes Krispy Kreme, which was the only one that I could afford. The other two I can't afford, so I wouldn't... As much as I've always liked the Beetle, I would never own one. And Chanel is way over my budget. And even if I had that kind of money, I don't think I would see myself spending that kind of money in clothes. It's just my thing. So the reason why I'm telling you all this is because I don't want you to take my opinion and say, okay, this is the way I should do it. What I want you to, to do is sit down with your own thoughts, with all the information that you've gathered from all of us and make your own decisions. I would rather respect somebody that stands by their decisions, even if they know that some people won't like them, than to follow somebody that is making all their decisions based on what everybody else says. Because guess what? At some point, like right now, we're going to disagree. And you know, I'm self-serving, I realize, but it never ceases to amaze me how so some of the people that have the most to say should keep their mouth shut because they're not exactly, they're not Peter Mon. Let's be honest. Peter is a pretty stand-up guy who I respect a lot. But there's a lot of people in the drama commentary community who are absolute trash. And they seem to be the biggest proponents of, well, if you follow this person, I'm not going to follow you. Guess what? You don't have a right to tell anybody what to believe and what not to believe. You have a right to tell them. You have a right and a responsibility to tell them who these people are. But at the end of the day, they have the right to decide who they follow and who they don't follow. And if you cannot respect people's decisions, and I'm not talking about somebody that is a serial killer or somebody that is a, a abuses children, that kind of thing. Because I'm pretty, you know, it's pretty. But once you get out of that level, which is the perpetrator, how far down are you going to go in terms of people that relate to them? Because one other thing that I wanted to bring up is, and it's kind of related to one I just I mentioned recently, is... If you go to church or you go to certain systems of belief, you are told that a good friend will stand by you through thick and thin. So what kind of friend are you that you would turn a blind eye to somebody just because they did something wrong? I'm not saying you have to support them. I'm just saying, what do you do? Also, one more thing about the trash humans in the commentary and drama community. They all follow a bunch of people. And they all have one little sentence on their profiles. I don't know if you've seen it, but it usually says something to the effect of a follow does not constitute approval or a follow does not con constitute support or blah, blah, blah. A lot of drama and commentary channels follow a lot of people because they want to be the first to the story. So does that mean that we stop following them because they still follow James Charles? I don't know. There's way too many variables on this particular one. So I can't wait to see what you guys have to say. This is a conversation. It's going to be open for anybody to comment on. Please be respectful, regardless of whether you agree or not with Peter or anybody or me or anybody else. Be respectful. I will not tolerate any disrespect of any kind. Do not call people ignorant just because they decided to continue to follow James. Just because somebody is blinded by whatever the magnetic thing that James has over people 
doesn't make them morons. It just makes them naive, I guess. So, yeah, just don't be mean. Thank you to my patrons. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.